just quickly talk to us a bit about why the importance of having these machines speaking the local language of the people here in Rwanda. Yeah, um, well, what is the easiest way to communicate? It's language, right? It's the most natural way to exchange information and communicate. Uh, now, uh, we have seen tremendous uh, progress in communicating with our uh, smartphones using language uh, through apps like Siri, uh, Alexa. Mm. Uh, but uh, this tremendous development in this way of uh, human computer interfacing uh, is only available for what we call digitally rich languages like English, French. Mm -hmm. um, but how can we build the uh, same understanding for our language, Kinyarwanda? Uh, most Rwandans actually only speak Kinyarwanda. Mm -hmm. So we think that if we enabled Siri, Alexa, or any other type of app to speak in Rwanda, then it would make it easier, much easier for most Rwandans to adopt technology. To adopt technology, but someone looking at you right now, listening to you say these words, how to make Siri speak Kenya, Rwanda. How do you even do that? What, what sort of steps are you taking to actually actualize what many people would just call a dream? Yeah. Well, it's, it actually has become much easier. Uh, you have uh, what we call machine learning algorithms that already exist that uh, can help uh, a computer learn a language. Now, the only thing that is required for a computer to learn Kinyarwanda is sizable amount of content. Uh, that's the first step. Having sizable amount of audio transcript so that we achieve what we call speech to text. Mm -hmm. I speak, it translates, machine translates directly into text. Right. So we have already collected uh, about 50 hours of audio and transcript. 50 hours of audio? Yes. How did you do that? Well, we, there are some sources, one online sources. Uh, there is uh, thebible.com mm -hmm. that has a spoken Bible, but also written. So that's already about 90 hours. Uh, we have a colleague who will uh, speak at our event next week mm -hmm. who has done an automated uh, software to pull that content. Uh, but we are also seeking content from partners uh, like uh, Urunana with the, all the hours of um, uh, audio speech, uh, audio transcript text uh, with, the, with the radio shows they've been running for now more than uh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, such other partners like Edges, they have produced a good number of audio. So now we use this to train the machine. Uh, it starts to learn speech to text. And after that, you can now do what we call text translation. Uh, and after that, making sense of the subject and context in context within a text. Right. And, and where we are today as we speak, I mean, as far as all those tedious if for lack of a better word, processes are concerned. Where are we at today? So we are still at the stage of uh, speech to text. So our event um, next week will really be to bring uh, on board a, a larger community. We are developing this as um, an open source project. What it means is whatever we produce will be available for any developer to reuse mm -hmm. for free. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, what we, we have done today is to have the content uh, we need to prepare the content. There is a number of steps and then start to training a machine, mm -hmm. a machine learning algorithm. The algorithm is already available, mm -hmm. just waits uh, good content to go through it. Right, and then timelines, because someone listening to this would be like, wow, this is just such an ambitious plan, an ambitious project. When do you expect a Rwandan to be able to communicate with Siri in Kenya, Rwanda, for instance? Well, with Siri, uh, that will require that we really have reached a good level of, um, of perfection of this, that uh, Apple wants to make it, uh, to make it uh, uh, accessible uh, uh, through Siri mm -hmm. or any other player like Google or, or so. But uh, when it comes to getting something works, when at least at this level of speech to text, mm -hmm. Uh, I think it can be done by end of this year, mm -hmm. where basically we have applications where people just talk and they see the text being written as, as they say it. Right. Before I let you go, uh, Clement, Rwanda is actually seeing a lot of guests coming in here for big meetings. Uh, but you say that the aim is actually to try and localize the language of these machines. But what of those guests who, are, who will be coming to Rwanda? I mean, because this is also such an opportunity because most of them come from different walks of life. I mean, how about them as a business opportunity there? 
Uh, so there is, uh, I mean, uh, when you have um, already done this speech to text, you, you can also do text to speech very easily. So now you have translation. So this, if really we produce what we want to produce, the, a natural language processing machine, mm -hmm. then you will be able to have almost real-time translation. Mm -hmm. You speak to, someone speaks Kinyarwanda, then it translates to text, trans, uh, it, it puts it into text, translates to English, and then speaks it in English. Mm -hmm. And you start to having applications where any visitor would come and speak to, to a Rwandan uh, who is speaking in Rwanda and it goes smoothly. Right. What are these bottlenecks that remain today, I mean, for such tech companies to actually ensure that what you are actually doing today is actually achieved? Um, I mean, it remains the content. Um, if, uh, if we get more content, so the content is a bit tricky. Uh, you, if, we, if I get a spoken Bible, that's a good type of content. But I also need to have other types of content, like conversation, mm -hmm. ha having content where people are just discussing like we are doing, mm -hmm. uh, a phone conversation. Because the language you speak when you are discussing with someone on a phone is different from when you are seated and conversing uh, face to face. Mm -hmm. So like it's having this type of uh, different, uh, in, in our language they call it uh, corpora or corp language corpus. So really content is the only challenge. Then putting some application out there because when people start to use it, this is the beauty of machine learning, it continues now getting or making itself better. Right. 